Welcome to the WW Radio Show, your Walt Disney World information station. I am your host, Lou Mangello, and this is show number 526. And I'm here once again, not only to help you have the best possible vacation experience when you go to the Disney parks, but I also want to bring you a little bit of that Disney magic wherever you are, not just with the podcast, but with my videos, our blog, live broadcasts on Facebook every Wednesday night, my books, audio tours, special events, and more. You can find everything over at www.radio.com. So one of my family's longtime traditions when I used to live in New Jersey was Sunday dinner with my entire family, like all 25 of us, at my grandmother's house in Brooklyn. We would gather around a large table and share food, wine, stories, and laughter. And while I miss those days and my grandmother's Italian cooking, It's been hard, like really hard, to replicate that experience since moving to Florida. But this week, I may have found something that might fill that need and my appetite, as well as satisfy my nostalgic cravings, as I invite you, my extended family, to join my family around the table inside Enzo's Hideaway at Disney Springs for Sunday supper. I'll then have the answer to our last Walt Disney World trivia question of the week and I'll pose a new challenge for your chance to win a Disney prize package then stay tuned to the end of the show I'll have more information about upcoming events, the next meet of the month, including information about my live broadcasts from Pixar Pier and Disneyland this week, your voicemails and more, so sit back relax and enjoy this week's episode of the WW Radio Show As kids growing up, sometimes we experience things that we think might be boring or pedestrian or even feel like a chore. And I didn't realize until I got older just how important it was to gather with my entire family around a very large table every Sunday afternoon for Sunday dinner. We would literally pile into the family truckster, brave the traffic from New Jersey, and schlep across the Veranzano Bridge and Belt Parkway into Brooklyn to my grandmother's house. And here, aunts, uncles, cousins, kids, and grandkids, literally from the tri-state area, would pile into the 25 or so seats around the grown-ups table, and another eight or ten of us would be at the kids' table. Yes, I did eventually graduate to the grown-ups table. Uh, My grandmother must have done nothing but just cook all week leading up to this day, as there was literally plate after plate after plate after plate of food, from antipasto to salad to appetizers to literally endless bowls of pasta and then you got to the main course it was eggplant and chicken and pork and beef and you name it it was there and then of course there was desserts plural and what seemed like three or more very painful hours of the adults drinking coffee very very slowly and then of course we would leave and my dad would stop at nathan's and coney island for like a a snack to have on the way home but i digress But little did I know how much I would miss those days as I got older, and even more so when I moved to Florida, because the quest for the best Italian food has been an ongoing journey, and now Sunday Supper has come to my fifth and really favorite Disney park, Disney Springs. 
Enzo's Hideaway Tunnel Bar as part of a trio of restaurants, including Maria and Enzo's and Pizza Ponte, which opened just this past January 2018. We've had a chance to try and love Maria and Enzo's pretty recently. But recently, they introduced here at the Hideaway, which we'll get to the theming and the tour, and I love the music in the background. They introduced Enzo's Sunday Supper, which is a special menu served every Sunday from 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. So this week, I want to invite you and your family to join me and my family, because you are part of our extended family, around the table, just like we did back in Brooklyn decades ago for Sunday dinner. Minus much of the loud conversation and occasional arguing, but if Enzo's had characters walking around just yelling at each other, it would be so awesome and relatable and nostalgic. So hopefully there's no arguing here so long as my kids keep their little hands out of my plate. And of course, I do want to welcome back to the show my family and yours, Deanna. Hi. Marion Rose. Hi. And Nicholas Peter. I have returned. You have returned, and we have returned. This is actually a second time. We were here for Mother's Day, I believe, um, just a few months ago in, uh, in this new establishment. And again, I was saying, not really half-jokingly, about how, since we've moved here, we have been sort of on this quest for really good Italian food. And you've heard me say over and over and over again that sometimes it's hard, especially when we come from the Northeast, because of, um, I blame the water to get really good pasta and good bread and good sauces. We were very pleased with what we had here the first time at Enzo's. Obviously, Deanna, you were with me when we were upstairs at Maria and Enzo's, like having a, a very long, a very delicious and glorious meal. It was absolutely glorious. And the other thing is, is that being half Italian, you cook Italian. So you become biased to what you're used to because when you cook it, you, you know, you eat the food and you guys know my sauce and, you know, you cook it a certain way with, you like it sweeter, sour, a little bit more wine. So this is going to be a test to, you know, our, our authenticity of being our, you know, our, her- our her- heritage, sorry. And, you know, I-, I was saying at the intro, Sunday dinner in Brooklyn, it just was... It just was a matter of course. It's what we did every Sunday. And the numbers were not exaggerations. Like, all of my cousins, their parents would come from everywhere, and we would gather around like they have here, which I love. They have this large communal table right in the middle of Enzo's. That's what it was like in this very low-ceilinged basement on Ocean Parkway in, in, in Brooklyn. So this idea of Sunday dinner definitely sort of... Um, hits an emotional heartstring for me because I do remember it and I do to a certain degree miss it. We make sure we have dinner together pretty much every single night. Every now and then we'll do like a Sunday dinner and have friends or something over but it's neat to be able to come to a restaurant like this again owned by the Patina Group where authenticity in the Italian dining experience is so very important. We saw that upstairs at Maria and Enzo's and what I like about Sunday supper here is They take all the work and guesswork out of it for you because it's a prefixed menu at $45 per person, $19 per child, nine and under. That includes a starter, pasta, meats, and desserts. And it's also a BYOB, which means you are meant to and really encouraged to bring a bottle or two or three of wine. And it's important to note there's no corkage fee. So a lot of times you'll bring a bottle of wine to a restaurant and they'll charge you anywhere from... $25 25 to $45, whatever it might be, to open the bottle of wine for you. Here, it's actually encouraged. And, you know, just like in, in Italy, wine is served for adults-only kids um, pretty much at every meal. So before we get to the menu, which I know you guys are really hungry, I, I starve my family the entire day before we go out to eat just so we can get the full dining experience. Let's talk about the atmosphere at Enzo's Hideaway. Um, the idea is that this space was discovered by Enzo and Maria uh, after they bought the abandoned airport terminal upstairs. And this was an area that was used during Prohibition's dry years for, um, for runners to sort of move alcohol back and forth. And you really get that. And, that, and this space actually was used as a tunnel when this was uh, downtown Disney and Pleasure Island, not to run alcohol, but for storage and other purposes. But I love 
the decor because it's a mixture of sort of when you first walk in like an, uh, an Italian winery and cellar, but I love all the graffiti on the wall, the, um, the incandescent light bulbs um, on sort of those, those wagon wheel uh, fixtures, and it's, um, it's warm but not overly dark. It's totally warm, and when you, when you are here, you feel like you're home. The lighting is perfect, the atmosphere. I love the stucco versus the brick on the wall, too. It almost gives you the feeling of it's kind of like unfinished, and they don't know what they're going to do with it, but you're, and you are. You, you feel like you're at a hideaway, like you're kind of like sneaking away from whoever is looking for you. So I really like that. I do. I like that feeling. And there's a full bar. I mean, you can come here, too, without a reservation. You just sit at the bar anytime. But my favorite part is just over my shoulder here where they have... Uh, it's almost like a show kitchen where they slice the fresh meats and cheeses that are stored in the refrigerated case nearby. So I think it's a, it's a warm, comfortable place. And I love the fact that there's, there's that communal table here that probably seats... It could probably fit my entire family. There's probably... 25 or maybe even 30 seats at that table. Marion's counting three. There's actually, and there's more than one, so there's 20. So they don't have this area over here just for you so that you could stand there and they'll just feed you meat, just so you know? I know. Well, you I thought that was like that. a buffet. Yeah, I know. I thought you... it was like cabanas. I could just walk over and they would slice the meat, you know, night. We'll get to the meats and cheeses. So um, let's sort of go through the menu very quickly again. It's a prefix menu, so there's really no choices to make. It starts off with an antipasto board and salad, meats and cheeses, fresh market greens, and a balsamic dressing. The pasta course, which I used to think as a kid was the main course. I didn't realize that it was sort of like a, a warm-up course. It's a rigatoni with Enzo's Sunday sauce, Parmigiano Reggiano, which I can eat all day long with fresh basil. And there's four different types of meats. There's a half-roasted free-range chicken, handcrafted meatballs, yay, braised wagyu shortbread, and sweet and spicy sausage. And then, of course, no meal will be complete without assorted sweets and ice cream. So you, you don't have to worry about what to order. Enzo is already, like my grandmother, has prepared the menu for you. Although there are a number of specialty beverages, cocktails, and mocktails. Um, there's San Pellegrino flavored waters, craft sodas, the Frajola Mock Mule, strawberry puree, ginger beard, club soda, and lime juice. A sparkling rosemary limeade with chilled sparkling water, lime juice, fresh rosemary. And I think I'm going to go for the blueberry maple mojito. Blueberry juice, blueberries, maple syrup, club soda, mint leaves, and lime juice. It almost sounds healthy because it has a combination of fruits and vegetables. But really on the opposite side of the menu is a huge... Uh, menu of what they call Giggle Water. They have a number of different cocktails. And then Enzo's smuggled and stashed collections of rums, bourbon, scotches, as well as a very, very extensive wine menu as well. So if you don't want to bring your own wine, they have it for you here. But um, if you uh, if you do, again, they have that non-corkage fee. So are you, uh, you guys going to get a mocktail with your dinner? I think I'm going to get myself the blueberry maple mojito. Because it's healthy and it's sweet. It's just the two best things combined. And Deanna, so we have brought we've brought a bottle of wine um, to enjoy with our dinner. Um, kids, what do you guys think of this space? Um, I think some because I know sometimes people think that it's you know it, because it's hidden away that it's primarily like a um, a nighttime space and bar, but it really has a very like warm, friendly atmosphere. I like it because the atmosphere, like, with the music and, like, the family style, it's just such a nice and warm atmosphere. Not, like, too warm, not too bright, but just the perfect amount. When I heard Tunnel Bar, it was kind of, like, weird. I'm like, great, I'm going to be going to a bar, and they're all going to sit and just drink for hours. There's going to be no good food. It's going to be horrible. I'm going to have a horrible experience. Um, but it actually isn't. I think the music really does transform it. And like the look, they—you could tell that they've put work into making it look like a, like a tunnel, like a underground, almost like a bunker, but not in like the scary way, like a nice bunker. <laughs> Don't, that doesn't happen a lot. Not a, a, a lot of nice bunkers. <laughs> it's a very nice bunker, um, and yeah, it's really and the food's good, which is a plus. Yeah, after coming here for Mother's Day, I'm excited for um, what they have here. And again, I like the idea of this being a. Um, you know, just family style, just bring out plate after plate of stuff to share.
Hello, welcome to Wenzo Sideway. My name is Melissa. I'll be taking care of you for tonight. Uh, so on Sunday, usually we have Sunday supper. So you're going to do a family-style meal. That means that you're going to share everything. Uh, so you're going to start with an appetizer, uh, with a salad, um, meat and cheese board, and then you're going to follow with some pasta. There it's rigatoni with a Sunday sauce. Um, you're going to have a roasted chicken with vegetables, grilled vegetables, and you're going to have three meats. There it's sausages, short ribs, and meatballs with their own sauce to finish off with the best uh, chef selection of desserts, gelati, cannoli, and tiramisu. So, get prepared. <laughs> when you said the gelati and cannoli, my daughter's <laughs> eyes widened visibly. Of course, when you said meatballs, that's when I got excited because this is what I used to do with my family, Italian family around the table in Brooklyn every Sunday. So, And we've been, you know, we're Italian from the Northeast, so we've been searching for really good. So you're from Italy, I assume? Yes, yeah, I'm what from part? Italy. I'm from Rome. Okay. Yes. So how does this compare with food that you find at home, sort of that same type of experience? That's pretty similar. I remember my grandma. Uh, she's from the south, from uh, Puglia. She used to make uh, a lot of food, to cook a lot of food on Sunday morning. So um, we used to have meatballs, you know, and all this, all this stuff. So like uh, salumi to start uh, with a side of salad maybe and then some pasta, of course. Uh, as a, a real Italian, you know, Italians get pasta every day, so eat pasta every day. So um, And then desserts, of course. So you sit down at the table at 12 and you finish at 4 p.m. And then you're stuffed, but you're happy <laughs> because your grandma cooked for you the whole morning, so you're all, you know, like, a, it's like a family reunion, you know, uh, cousins, uh, parents, uh, uh, grandfathers, grandmothers, and that's... What you described as exactly what we used to do every Sunday in Brooklyn, so it's nice to know that uh, what we were doing was not unique. Uh, I think the trick is obviously to come hungry, because it sounds like there's a ton of food, and I am super excited. Do you guys want something to, to drink first? Yeah. Can I please have the blueberry maple mojito, please? Yes, of course. Thank you. Deanna, you're going to have the, the wine. Um, I'll also try the blueberry maple mojito as well, please. Thank you. Oh, okay, sure. No problem. That's one of our uh, mocktail. So we, we created a mojito that could be... Uh, that could be uh, yeah, for, I mean, adults either, adults or kids, children, but non-alcoholic, so that's a good uh, option, you know, with some blueberries, fresh blueberries, very fresh, some for the summertime, yeah. I'm super excited. I know. I'm super excited. I can't wait to start. Okay. Perfect. And you bring your own bottle of wine, right? Yeah. yeah. So here on Sunday, we, uh, we have also this option, so you can bring your own bottle of wine without any uh, corkage fee. Um, so bring your own as, as you prefer, you know, white, red, rosé, sparkling. Uh, we'll try to, uh, we're going to accommodate your, uh, your preferences, yeah. That's a wonderful option that you have, that you're able to do that. Because, you know, especially, you know, people here on vacation, if they want to stop and get a bottle of wine or they have, they're at a vacation club and they want to bring a bottle of wine with them, I think that's spectacular that you do that for them. Yeah, there are, uh, you know, it's it's good because um, for especially for locals, for locals people, uh, they used to come uh, at Disney Springs uh, maybe uh, in the weekend. Uh, if they know about this, um, be, bring your own bottle of wine. It's very good, so they can uh, prepare, you know, uh, as, uh, and, and and get your their preferences. Uh, and, and come here and have their Sunday meal as in family, as it was in family, you know. And also for uh, for some people that are like that are in vacation on vacation, yeah, uh, they could either bring their own bottle of wine or anyway, we have a great wine list, so they can have wine anyway. So we got a lot of uh, a lot of wines, uh, whites, reds, uh, sparkling, rosé, sweets or dry. Uh, for any um, any taste, but they, they, we have a great selection uh, between international wines and uh, Italian wines. Of course, I mean uh, we are proud of uh, of, of our of our wine in Italy, so they can have both. Thank you. We're super excited and we're hungry, so yeah, even better. Yes, of course. Uh, let's <laughs> Thank <go>. you. Yeah. <laughs>
So here we have misticanza, a typical Italian salad with some mixed green leaves, uh, fennel, cherry tomatoes and apples on the top and everything is served uh, uh, with a um, white balsamic dressing and for the board you have prosciutto di parma, then you have mortadella on the bottom and the spicy salami with some pickled vegetables and then you have the best pecorino romano and parmigiano reggiano cheese. Enjoy guys! <laughs> I am sitting here with a huge smile on my face. Get your hands out of my food. I love, I could do this all day. This reminds me of not just growing up with my family, but holidays at my house where we stand around the island and just pick the Italian meats and cheeses. I love how the prosciutto is so thinly sliced, you can see right through it. And I could eat these chunks of Pecorino Romano cheese all day all night the spice salami and the pickled vegetables like this alone for me could be my entire meal I, i'm not going to have any salad right now thank you i'm going to just stick with the meats and cheese salads it's just filler so first things first let's talk about portion sizes there's a huge bowl of salad as well as a large and i love the way it's served just served on paper on a large wood plank <laughs> There is a, a huge, I was I'm very pleasantly surprised at the amount of food that, food that you get. A lot of times on a, pre, on a prefix menu, the portions will be relatively small. There is a ton, like I'm literally going to ask for a doggy bag, not that there anything might be left for the cheeses because you can't let it go to waste. But there's the four different types of meats, and I love the prosciutto and the mortadella, like you said, with the pistachio. There's that, that um, richness and that saltiness that pairs so well with the, with the sharpness of the Pecorino Mono cheeses. And the pickled vegetables, I love they have giant artichoke hearts with the stems. So you took what I was going to say about all the wonderful pickled vegetables in there. <clears throat> but I would also like to add, the vinaigrette that's on the salad is such a nice, um, it, it's very, very like mild and it really accents the pickled vegetables and the different kind of meats and cheeses um, because it also has this delicious like tart um, apple on it and the different colored tomatoes it's absolutely delicious and this and they got the fresh warm bread that they bring to your table which I'll take another piece just because I you know this reminds me of the bread that I had at home which I say repeatedly is so hard to find in Florida it's got that wonderful crust on the outside it's served with a plate of extra virgin olive oil. Nicholas, you are devouring, you are my son, you are devouring through your plate. What do you think of this? I think it gives a nice variety of pickled vegetables and cheeses, and the salad is amazing with the nice mild dressing, as my mom said. And I think it's a nice classic Italian start to a meal, and there's still more to come. So. Like, I could do this and be ha like this and pasta. I could do, which, yeah. which when I was a kid, when the pasta would come out, I used to think like that was it, and then my grandmother would bring a plate full of fried eggplant, chicken, cut, like, there must have been 400 chickens worth of cutlets on that plate, but just going back to here at Enzo's, a really nice mixture and variety of, uh, of, of flavors and a huge, huge portion for the four of us. So as we're making our way, and bravo to all of us for, for doing such a good job going through it, through the meat and cheese board, one of the things that I love about this, and to be honest, I took all of the Pecorino Romano cheese and I put it on my side plate because I was afraid she was going to take it away. Our server came by and asked how everything was. Again, very, very attentive. My water glass has never been empty at all. But she said, you guys just let me know when you want me to take this and bring out the next course. So there's no sense of feeling rushed, as in they're trying to turn over tables or trying to get you the next course. You sort of eat at your own pace. And it does remind me of dinner with family, where it is a very, you know, it's a longer affair. It's not, let's hurry up and eat and do something else. You know, eating is, is the experience itself. And I love the fact that this meal is 
very intentional in not trying to rush you from course to course. But I'm ready for my next course. So they make this absolutely scrumptious blueberry mojito. Blueberry maple mojito. And you can do it. Not, it comes non-alcoholic, but you can do it alcoholic also. So the recipe is you muddle the blueberries with maple syrup. And then you add lime juice. And then you add soda water and mint leaves. It is so refreshing and spectacular and, like, very, very, like, refreshing that I could drink this all the time. It's so good. Marion sampled mine and Nicholas's and then got one herself. What do you think of that? It's really good. I was, like, I really don't like carbonated drinks, like, at all. I can't drink them. But this is, like, it's sweet enough and, like, the flavor is balanced enough that the carbonation doesn't even, you know, I mean, it's there, obviously, but it's, like... It's, it's really good. Yeah, I don't like soda, and I still like it, so. So we have here rigatoni pasta. We have meatballs with short rib and spicy sausage, and we have roasted chicken and vegetables. Thank you so much. Thank you. Always Parmesan cheese, please. So I love this. They're, they're served again on that giant wood plank, and there's three ginormous bowls. I'll try and remember to post pictures in the show notes of don't touch Nicholas. I have to photograph it first and then I want to eat it. So um, I love the fact that the the chicken, uh, when I saw the the half chicken on there, I wasn't sure how it was going to be served, but it served um, sort of cut up into small pieces with roasted vegetables, wonderful and look at all of the, I just want that gigantic bowl of meat. Look at the size of the meatballs and the sausage with the cheese. So I love the portions that they have. They have these oval dishes and and they just have a heaping amount of meatballs and sausage and pasta is one of them and one of them is chicken. And it is so much, it is even more. This is a lot of food for four people. This is a lot of food for two adults and two kids. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we're going to eat it all. We're all I, I can see what. what's nice about this is I get to eat it now, and I get to eat it again on the couch tonight while I'm watching TV. This, again, this is exactly the way it was served as, my, my daughters tell me to hurry along, but this is, this is the way it was served at my grandmother's house. You know, everything was just brought out family style, and you all just dove in. So kids... Dive in. So here you have a classic Italian. That's why my grandma used to make uh, on Sunday at the lunch. So some pasta, of course, uh, with the Sunday. Was it? What is the Sunday sauce? It's pomodoro sauce, marinara sauce. Yeah, very uh, classic. And then uh, meatballs because uh, uh, the uh, the sauce it, and the meatballs are cooked together with some short ribs and a sausage that gives a little bit more taste. And uh, chicken, roasted chicken, is a classic Italian with some grilled vegetables. That's uh, a real uh, must-do on Sunday lunch. Uh, so, buon appetito, enjoy. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah, it's very validating to know that the way we were doing it at home with my grandmas was the way that they were doing it in Italy, too. So what was a nice surprise that I didn't realize, I didn't see it on the menu, was that she just came over with planks of four pieces of salmon for us as well. So there's the pasta, the spicy sausage, the meatball, the short ribs, the chicken, and the salmon, and I still have my plate of Pecorino Romano cheese. So I had a chance, I, before I, I started recording, I sort of went through and very quickly tasted them all, and I want to get your guys' opinion. I started at simplest. I started with the pasta because, again, when you're used to a homemade sauce that has been simmering for hours upon hours, you can tell the difference between the sauce that comes out of a jar and sauce that's sort of made with the requisite ingredient of love. This is that rich, uh, with a hint of sweetness um, that you get on the sauce. The pasta is cooked perfectly al dente. The sausage is phenomenal. It's got just the right amount of a bit of a spice to it. 
And I'm a meatball guy, man. I could eat meatballs all day, all night. Those meatballs are probably just under maybe baseball size. And you can you can um, see and taste the uh, the breadcrumbs and the fennel and the different meats that they used to pull together. Nicholas, you've already finished your pasta so far. I'm so proud of you. Are you going to finish that meatball? Yeah. Darn it. So you're all... Um, anybody, what, what's your initial thoughts? I think this is a very, like, this whole entire meal is just a very classic Italian-style family meal, family dinner, family Sunday supper, like you did with your family. It's so nice. The atmosphere, everything here is... So, uh, Nicholas, delicious. pretend that your mother's not listening. How do these meatballs compare to the ones that you get at home? Because that's the real, that's the true test right there. Nothing can beat my mom's meatballs. But, <laughs> that that's just... That's a spicy meat the ball, huh? But these are very good. These are spicy, spicy meat the ball. <laughs> so, I was not a big eater as a kid. So I'm going to say something that I said at my grandmother's house that I don't normally say. This is a lot of food. There was a lot of food. Certainly for forty five dollars for adults, an incredible value. Because just look how much food. And I don't want to say we still have because we're still going through it, but uh, we have been sort of eating nonstop and there's still, we haven't even gone through our first bowl of pasta and finished all the meats yet, but I promise to remedy that because those meatballs and the sausage are by far my favorite. That sausage has a nice uh, little bit of sort of a, like a red pepper flaky spiciness to it, and I love how well those meatballs are prepared. Uh, and the, uh, you know, sometimes you get sort of a bland meatball. These are so incredibly flavorful. The sausage has a nice zinc to it. The meatballs are delicious, but they're nothing compared to my mom's. And the short rib falls apart and is amazing. You don't need a knife to cut the short rib. You do not need a knife at all. You just cut it with your fork and it'll come right off. It does, and it melts in your mouth and it's almost like a almost like a smokiness and a sweetness to it. So I don't know how everyone prepares their sauce, but but you can prepare it with a brujol and fry everything, all your meats together, and then put it in your sauce to give it that extra flavor. I've never prepared my sauce with short ribs, and these short ribs were so spectacular. They totally did fall off the bone. I mean, there was no bone in them. They, they fell apart when you when you ate them. So I think my next pot of sauce is going to have to have short ribs. So I'm not a big meat person, like, in general. I don't really eat meat that much. I'd much rather eat veggies or fruit. And I don't like chicken because if it's not prepared, like, perfectly, it's dry and it makes your whole mouth dry and it's just not good. But this chicken was so, like, it didn't, it was like, it was, uh, yeah. (laughs) And it was on, like, a bed of roasted veggies, which obviously I like, as I just said, I like vegetables. But it's very, it was really moist. It was tender. You don't need a knife for this either. And the skin just falls right off, which does have flavor, may I add. But it was very good. So I almost had the chicken just now as an afterthought based on how much you don't. I can't believe how Flavorful. moist it is. And it's not in any kind of a sauce. I mean, it's very, very simply prepared. But it's so light, and it is. It, it, that's really, really tasty. It's very, very um, flavorful and tender. So sometimes when you cook chicken, you can overcook it, and the texture of it and the flavor of it, it's very dried out. But this chicken, it's so moist and delicious. And The other thing, too, of note, again, and I don't think we'll get there, is the pasta is refillable. You get free refills on the pasta. Not that we're even... I might get close. Not that we're even close to that, but see this? Like, this is the... It is. This is sort of the perfect Sunday meal for me. You have the antipast, you have your pasta, you have your meats, and then you finish it off with dessert and coffee, if I'm even going to be hungry by then. 
Uh, I'm really, really pleasantly surprised at just how much spice there is on the sausage. Sometimes you'll see a spicy sausage, and it's relatively pedestrian and bland because you don't want to scare anybody away. That's got just the right amount of heat to it without taking away from the flavor of the sausage itself. So I have to say, too, I'm not a spicy eater by far at all. And they do serve it in the same um, in the same bowl as the meatballs and the short ribs. And sometimes if you have something spicy mixed with other things, you can taste the spice. By far, you couldn't taste any spice at all on the short ribs or the meatball. It was it was perfect. Yeah, this is this was is was continues to be phenomenal. Very very pleasantly surprised on a number of points. Uh, presentation is beautiful. The portion sizes are far beyond what I would have expected for a price fixed menu. Um, and the, the 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 depth of flavor, especially in the meats, was really really a nice surprise. And pro tip: even if you don't finish your cheese from the antipasto, you keep it with you, and always get extra bread, because this is, because now what you do is you take your bread and you break it open and you dip it in the sauce, and dipping it either in the pasta sauce and even. The sauce at the bottom of the bowl with the meat, that's, I could, yeah. And then put the cheese on it. That's my girl. So, before dessert comes, I want to ask you guys a question. And as always, I want an honest answer. Taking your mother's and your grandmother's sauce and pasta and meatballs out of the equation, how do you think this food compares? Because we do, we talk about sort of that quest for the best Italian food, and we've had some bad Italian meals in Florida. Those are very easy to find, especially in a lot of the touristy areas. How do you think this compares to Italian uh, restaurant quality Italian food that you've had elsewhere? So it's very hard to make good Italian food not in Italy, and there's a lot of bad Italian places, as you said, in the touristy areas. But this place. They pulled it off. It was excellent, phenomenal. It was so I have yet to go to Italy, but other than, you know, my mom, my grandma's Italian food, you don't find, as Nick said, very, like, great ones that stand up to, I guess, your test. But I do have to say, at least for, like, where we are, this is really, really good. And it, it comes close, but, Yeah. So there's something to be said about authenticity. And this food by far is authentic. It also goes back to how they make their sauce. And as Lou has said, there is a way of preparing sauce that it needs to simmer over several hours. And it actually has a way of taking in all of the different flavors that you put into it. Well, this sauce has been simmering and you can taste the garlic and the basil and the red wine and the love that they put into it, which complements every single dish that we have just put on our palates. So I have to say that this is by far one of my best Italian meals that I've had in Orlando. Yeah, there's a lot of things that were pleasantly surprising about this, um, including atmosphere and, and presentation, quantity, but quality wins out. The quantity, quality over quantity is, is obviously much more important. And what I like about this, too, and I think part of the reason why I'm enjoying it so much is a combination of the quality of the food mixed w- with the atmosphere. It's a very casual, laid back. You can come right from the parks and eat here. Or you could sort of make this even, you know, a nice date night. There's a, you can see that there's um, uh, a corporate people that are here at one of the other large tables, but you're right. I think in terms of overall mixture of, you know, the quality of food, the quantity of food, the price point, um, it is. Look, I think especially us, like, when you eat, it's about how it makes you feel. I don't, I don't mean just feeling full. I mean just how the meal makes you feel. This very much is Italian comfort food. 
And it, it's, I love that sort of, thank you. I love that warm feeling that this meal has given me so far. And now it's time for dessert. Oh, did you save room for the best part of the meal? Yes. Everybody except yes. my daughter. My daughter doesn't want this. Yes, 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 yes. So I have a, a quick question for you. As you're, and one of the things I love is that, again, the pasta is refillable. You were generous enough to refill the pasta. We're taking home like a whole nother, like this will last me for a couple of days. Do you offer options for either um, vegetarian or etc.? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we can make uh, an eggplant parm, parmigiana, which is uh, basically uh, lavy red uh, baked eggplant, flour and baked. And then there is a layer of tomato sauce and topped with mozzarella cheese that's completely vegetarian. We have it usually on the menu, on our regular menu. So we can offer that as a vegetarian option. We still can make the... Um, salad as an appetizer and the cheeses and the uh, pasta with the sundae sauce and desserts are completely vegetarian so you can have great options for us. So if anybody has like a gluten free other other can they talk to you or the chef about Yeah 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 of course so we can make absolutely gluten free pasta so and uh, the appetizer is uh, completely gluten free the appetizer and the meats and the cheeses um, the pasta is gluten free and the roasted chicken with vegetables uh, are also gluten free and you can also still get the uh, short ribs and the sausages excluding the meatballs because there's uh, some gluten in it but you can still get the three the two meats with their own sauce and or even if you're allergic to gluten yes I actually like a little extra gluten in my meatballs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so as we wait for our espresso and cappuccinos, where he couldn't help but dive into dessert, that I'm not normally a tiramisu. That tiramisu is, so is phenomenal. It's so soft and spongy, and just the right amount of sweetness. What do you think of that? It's so great with all the flavors of like a coffee and everything I deliver. That's wonderful. Marion, you um, you commandeered an entire cannoli for yourself? Mm-hmm. And that's all you have is, right, you haven't even stopped eating it. So, again, the importance of the cannoli, the shell has to be fresh and crispy. There's a, an abundance of chocolate chips just sort of falling off on the outside. And a huge plate of uh, gelato. So there's a lemon and there's a chocolate, which I think offers a really nice finish to the meal so let me start off with the tiramisu sometimes you can get a tiramisu and it's too soaked in the simple syrup and the um it's just it's too like moist this with the homemade cream is decadent by far and the dusting of chocolate on top is just it's lovely mind you the gelato is a vanilla. I'm not quite sure it's a lemon. No, I think it's lemon. No, is it a lemon? It's vanilla. It's vanilla. It's a vanilla and chocolate gelato. It's not, gel- it's not vanilla or lemon. It's something different. It's not, whatever it is, it's sweet. And when you mix it with the chocolate, that's the play right there. When you mix it with the chocolate, whatever it is, I think it's a vanilla. That chocolate is so rich. It's so creamy, like a gelato. It's so so incredibly creamy. It is so Marion, I'm so happy that you're focusing on the cannoli because you'll leave. And I'm not normally a sweet guy, as you know, but that's the perfect finish to this meal. There's just enough for everybody to share. It's a nice um, sort of uh, sweet punctuation on the savory meats and the cheeses and the pastas. So I did take a taste of the cannoli, and the cream in the cannoli is made so perfectly with the crunch of the shell. I'm going to let my daughter tell you the rest of how she feels after she finishes putting the last one in her mouth. She's giving me the look in like the eye, like, don't bother, don't put that microphone in front of my face. I'm still enjoying Can you at least give me hand signals? Do a little charade. I'm getting a big thumbs up and an encouraging thumbs up. You're savoring every single bite of that cannoli, aren't you? That was so good. It was the perfect finish. What was the perfect? What was the? What was your? I'm sorry. What was your favorite part of the dessert trio that you got? 
I think the tiramisu, just because it was so nice and it was sweet, and just all the flavors were just the perfect, ideal, amazing finish to it. A little tiramisu, a little espresso, that's nice. Do you have anything that you'd like to add, Miss Marion? I'm really happy that you guys were excuse me, focusing on the tiramisu because I unfortunately don't like coffee. So I got a whole entire cannoli to myself. And I like to, my, to consider myself a cannoli connoisseur. I love cannoli a lot. And this one was really, really good. I normally don't like chocolate chips in a cannoli. But this one had a lot, and you it like chocolate chips in the cannoli. What's wrong with you? And it was actually really, really good. And when, so I, I would like to save a cannoli, but the shell just gets really soggy, and soggy cannolis are disgusting. But this one was really, really nice because it was, you know, it was still hard and crispy, while the cream was soft and sweet. And then there were chocolate chips. It was good. I gave it a ten out of ten. Yeah, this was a, uh, you know sort of coming full circle when I heard Sunday Supper I was hoping it was going to be you know I, I started to immediately think back as I said to what I grew up with it's an experience that I have not really been able to recreate other than on a much smaller scale at our home with people I think they've done a really remarkable job of and then even our server was saying before in between meals when I wasn't recording this is exactly what she would do. She felt that there was a level of authenticity to this experience that we've had, that I've had as kids, that she had back home, and I think they're able to bring to a, a restaurant experience, which I think is sometimes difficult to do. At $45, um, and I'll ask her about any available discounts uh, for annual pass or tables in Wonderland, but I think at $45, I think this is a great value for the amount of food that you get, we've been here for, what, almost a couple of hours? I mean, it's a very, I don't feel, yeah, so it's been over two hours we've been here. I don't feel rushed at all. I feel, you know, absolutely comfortable and relaxed. We still haven't had our uh, cappuccino and espresso as yet. And you said, I think it's from 4 to 10, right. um, this, the, this supper on Sundays. On Sundays and... You know, it is. It, it's just a fabulous way to get together with either friends or family or friends you consider family to relax and have a great meal together. I think this is something that if you're visiting Walt Disney World, I would absolutely add this to your itinerary. And I think as locals, I can see coming here, again, as a family or extended family, taking a bunch of friends and knowing you can get the table for 20, all get together together. And there is something about sitting at that communal table, communal table and sharing food family style. Um, I, I think this is where, you know, relationships aren't just formed, but but the bonds grow so much stronger um, as you gather around food. So we always have a thing at our at our table, too, and in our home that it's things that are shared are always better. better. Food and food is always better shared with family and friends. So, so Melissa, I have... I have many questions for you, but okay. the two most immediate ones. Yes. What were the flavors of gelato? Gelato are uh, orange sorbet and uh, chocolate. Orange. I told you there was some sort of a citrus. I wasn't sure if it was lemon. I love how the sweetness of the orange and the creaminess of the chocolate just played so very well together. And I tell you why. It's uh, an Italian brand of gelati. Okay. It's called Vivoli. Okay. We also cool. have oh, okay. we also have the shop in Disney Springs, so. We, we get the gelati from Vivoli, and it's um, typically um, a Tuscan brand, so you can find it also in Italy, and that's what, uh, it's, uh, it's like a real, real gelati, you know, it's not like American ice cream. So a lot of taste, a little bit less of sugar, because the uh, American ice cream is more, you know, cream and sugar, so that gives the, the real taste of gelati. I get the orange. Yeah. Thank you. I get the this. Orange. Yes. See, I wasn't crazy when I said lemon. Yeah, it was no, just a little I bit farther off. Lemon. Uh, also, are there any discounts for tables in Wonderland or annual pass? We do take uh, tables in Wonderland uh, dinner time. Unfortunately, not the annual pass, but we still take the uh, cast member discount in case for dinner time, even for Sunday supper. Yeah. Because I was just saying, I think that this, I think Sunday supper is something that people who are 
vacationing here should add to their plans. And for locals, like this is a place that I would come back to, not just with my immediate family, but with friends and extended family. I love the large communal table because that's what you want it to be. You want to have a nice, long, relaxing, delicious, feeling like home cooked meal. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we have a large party tonight. We have a big company, so I, I guess they're enjoying the, uh, the idea of the family style meal and sharing. And uh, about the discounts, yeah, uh, Tables in Wonderland, I, I know a lot of uh, guests that we had here, the, they were on vacation and they had the Tables in Wonderland because they come often here in Florida visiting the Disney parks and uh, Disney restaurants. Uh, so it's very convenient for them as well, as well as the locals, people. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, thank you. And you were wonderful too. I so appreciate it. We were just saying before, one of the things I love that Patina does is bring people here who are from Italy. You were mentioning you worked at Epcot in the Italy Pavilion. It, it adds a level of authenticity and love and um, making it feel like you're, you're not, you don't feel like you're in Disney. You feel like you're in Italy, right? Yeah. Yeah, I guess uh, it's, it's a good experience for our guests as well. I mean, it's a, a great experience for me uh, to, to be here, to live here for a while, even for a while, for, and to work here. But I think it's a great experience for the guests because what's better than to be, uh, you know, hosted by uh, an Italian server uh, in an Italian restaurant here in America, yeah. I think it's so important too, like you do, you represent the culture and what we love to feel. And so you bring it, you bring us home to your country. And I, I thank you for that. And you, you understand, you know, we talk about how, you know, the best memories are, are made as you're sharing food around the table. And that's the sense that I get here. The only thing that you need is a little room in the back with a couch and blankies so we can take a little nap when we're done. Um, but I don't feel overly full. I feel just so satisfied and you have been wonderful and I really appreciate everything tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. Uh, I, it would be, it's been my pleasure to have you here and uh, I want to tell you something. You might not be able to speak Italian but your uh, uh, espresso coffee, espresso coffee after the meal, after dessert, it, it, it's what a real Italian does after the meal. So I'm happy to see that not only was my grandmother doing it right but I'm carrying on the tradition and doing it right as well. Um, I took two years of Italian in college. I can hardly speak a word. I'll say grazie and hope that that's, you know, as good as I can do. <laughs> Let's don't talk about bad words, okay? <laughs> I don't want to learn to speak Italian. I want to learn to speak with the Italian accent. Um, so, yes, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, I hope you enjoyed everything. And if you guys have the chance to come back, it will be my pleasure to have you as my guest again. Okay. You might see us again, like next week. Okay. And maybe the week after. <laughs> Thank you, so Thank you very much. Thank you. So there you go. Um, you know, from stem to stern, just a wonderful, um, memorable, delicious meal. Every part of it um, was a, uh, a pleasant surprise for me. Any final thoughts from anybody around the table? Thank you for that amazing dinner, and I will see you guys next time. Yum, and it's nap time. So this was a wonderful experience with so many different wonderful things to, to taste. So thank you for sharing it with us, and we'll see you next time. And I want to thank you, my extended family, the listener, for joining my immediate family around the table. I'd love to know if you have gotten a chance to try Enzo's Hideaway, specifically the Sunday supper, every Sunday from 4 to 10 p.m. You can email me, Lou, at www.radio.com. Go to our group on Facebook. Go to www.radio.com slash community. That'll take you to our Box People group. Share your experience. Share your photos there. Better yet, you can call the voicemail at 407-900-9391. Leave your own little mini review of Enzo's Hideaway and Sunday Supper. Uh, thank you again for joining us, and I'll see you, Enzo, maybe next week. I'm so full and so fluffy. It was so worth it, though. Oh. <laughs> Everything about it was so delicious. It's like a warm Italian blanket just wrecked. What? We'll be back. I just need to learn to speak with an Italian accent. I don't want to learn Italian, just the accent.
it's time for our Walt Disney World Trivia Question of the Week, where I invite you to test your knowledge of Walt Disney World history or see how well you pay attention to the details, sometimes in what you see or hear, possibly eat. If you think you know the answer, you can enter via our online form for a chance to win a Disney prize package. Of course, before we get to this week's question, we're going to go back, review last week's, and select our winner. So last week, I asked you to simply finish a sentence, and I think I told you that it was from a classic attraction. I think I even probably strongly hinted that it was in Tomorrow. And the line was, yeah, and maybe sometime in the new century, your father will learn how to talk to our blank. And the blank was, of course, oven. Now, that line comes from the final Christmas scene from Walt Disney's Carousel of Progress in Tomorrowland, where Patricia, the daughter, says, we've got a whole new century waiting for us out there. Sarah, the wife, says, yeah, and maybe sometime in the new century, your father will learn how to talk to our oven. Sarah, it could be a little nicer. He's having a rough day. And dad, father, says, well, maybe by then our ovens will be able to read our minds. But hey, as long as we're all here and happy and together for the holidays, who cares if I burned our Christmas turkey? Let's order some Chinese food. I added that last part myself. But congratulations and thanks to all of you who entered and I took all the correct entries, randomly selected one, and again, you are playing for the digital version of my 102 Ways to Save Money for Not Walt Disney World book, all seven of the audio tours, a Magic Band cover, stickers, a pop socket. I think I might even said a shirt as well. If not, I'm going to throw in a shirt from our WW Radio shirt collection. If you go to www.radio.com slash shirts, you'll find not just logo gear, but thousands of Disney, Star Wars, Marvel, gaming, and geek shirts. So again, I took all the correct entries, randomly selected one, and last week's winner is Matthew Lawton. So Matthew, Matthew, congratulations. You used the online form. I have your shirt size. I will get your prize package out to you right away. If you played last week and didn't win, that's okay, because here's your next chance to enter in this week's Walt Disney World Trivia Challenge. So this week, I'm going to take you from Tomorrowland to Frontierland, one of my favorite lands in any of the Disney parks anywhere, and over to Pecos Bill's Tall Tale Inn and Cafe, not just because I'm recording this and I'm incredibly hungry, but because I love that restaurant. I love the details, I love the story and the theming, including some of the sketches and paintings and images that adorn the walls of the entire cafe. Now, over the fireplace, which may or may not be located near one of my favorite places inside the cafe, which is the Fixin's Bar, you'll find a picture of Bill and his beloved horse. And your question this week is to tell me, what is the name of Pecos Bill's horse? Now, you have until Sunday, July 22nd at 11.59 p.m. to go to www.radio.com, click on this week's podcast, use the online form there. And this week, you're going to play for all the digital products, the books, the seven audio tours, and a brand new WW Radio vinyl sticker that you can put on your car, your laptop, your wall, your mirror, not available anywhere else except as a prize and i'll throw in a pop socket for your phone as well so good luck and have fun that's going to do it for this week's show thank you so very much for spending and sharing your time with me don't forget that i want you to be part of the community and conversation So please go to www.radio.com slash community. Join our Box People group on Facebook. It is obviously free and fun and very, very welcoming. Please come by, introduce yourself, and be part of the WW Radio family. And I invite you to please join me every Wednesday night at 7.30 p.m. Eastern for WW Radio Live. I do a live video broadcast and real-time chat with you on Facebook, either from the home studios or oftentimes out and about from the parks. Speaking of which... An important reason why you should have notifications turned on on Facebook is because this Wednesday and Thursday, I'll be live from Disneyland and, more importantly, the brand-new Pixar Pier over at Disney California Adventure. Together, we will wander, explore, maybe hit a few attractions, and, of course, eat. And speaking of community, because it really is the heart of what we do here at WW Radio, I want to thank some of the new members of the WW Radio Nation family who joined up this month, including... Bridget Mitchell, Jeff Richardson, and Richard L. Watts. I also want to thank all of the longtime members who've been part of the Nation family, whether it's for a month, a week, or for the past few years. If you want to not only help the show, because being part of the Nation goes a long way towards helping WWO, but you also get exclusive rewards every month. I create a new scavenger hunt for the parks, sometimes for the cruise line. 
We have a private Facebook group, personalized Magic Band covers, logo gear, backpacks, and t-shirts. I send monthly care packages from Walt Disney World. Plus, we also have an exclusive live video group call, early access, special discounts for events, lots more. To find out more, please visit www.radio.com support. And don't forget that a portion of your contributions do go to our Dream Team project to benefit the Make-A-Wish Foundation of America. And of course, speaking of community, I want to hear from you. I want to help you. So if you have a question you want me to answer on the show, you can email me, lou at www.radio.com. Call the voicemail. Be heard on the air at 407-900-9391. You can also connect with me on Twitter, Instagram, and Pinterest. I am at Lou Mangello. But of course, I believe that nothing beats a handshake and a hug. I want to thank everybody who came out to the last meet of the month over at Sunshine Seasons Food Fair. This past weekend in Epcot, had a great time seeing old friends, making new ones as well. I'll have the August dates in Walt Disney World very, very soon. But also don't forget, I'll be speaking at a couple events on the road. Saturday, August 25th, I'll be at the Indy Disney Meet in Nobleton, Indiana. And the following day, I'll be doing an on-the-road meetup in Latrobe, Pennsylvania. I'll be speaking at a college there. We'll have a meetup late that night. If you go to the events page at www.radio.com slash community, you can learn more and RSVP. And speaking of being on the road, a lot of times I will create on the road events and meetups as I travel to speak at conferences and events and schools. To find out more about how I could maybe help you or your event, please visit lumangelo.com, as well as how I might be able to help you personally turn what you love into what you do with one-on-one mentoring, small group coaching. My weekly mastermind group is launching this month. So if you're interested in getting some ongoing support, accountability, and help from not just me, but a few other like-minded individuals, you can click on lumangelo.com and go to the coaching page. Also, don't forget that my weekend workshop in Walt Disney World, October 6th and 7th this year, we now have less than about 15 seats available. It is a two-day workshop limited to just 50 people. Our keynote speakers are Ashley Eckstein and Dan Cockerell. They and the other presenters and the other attendees are going to work together with you to help you turn that thing that you love into that thing that you do or take your idea, your product, your service, your business, your blog, your videos, whatever it is, to the next level. If you have any questions to find out more, visit lumangelo.com and click on Momentum. Thanks, as always, to Becky Mankin from MEI and Mouse Fan Travel. She's not just my official and recommended travel provider. She and her team won't just give you all available discounts and the best possible prices on your next Disney vacation, all at no cost to you. But we're also going to be together in Disneyland and Pixar Pier, so we're going to be going live together over the next couple of days, uh, sharing some fun in Disneyland and Pixar Pier with you. Go to celebrationspress.com, find out how you can subscribe and order back issues and special editions of Celebrations Magazine. And as always, my friend, and you are my friend, whether we have met yet or not, and you show it so many ways, not just online, but so many of you that I met this weekend at the meet of the month, I am so incredibly grateful. All I ask is that if you like the show, and I hope that you do, Please help spread the word. I want you to help grow this family and community by inviting your friends to be part of it. That's why it remains so wonderful and warm and welcoming because we are bringing in, we are inviting in, we are attracting in like-minded people that want to just talk about the things that make us happy about going to Disney and the parks and the movies and Marvel and Star Wars. And the best way to do that is by you inviting them onto the Facebook group to listen to the show, to connect on social, however... But one of the best and simplest and easiest ways for you to help is by taking just a couple of minutes to rate and review the show over on iTunes. Thanks to you with more than 1,500 five-star reviews. It's so incredibly helpful. I want to thank some recent reviewers like D. Sampson, who says, It's a must-listen for Disney enthusiasts. Lose a great wealth of Disney knowledge. His podcast connects us to the world when we can't be there. And as he says, he's a friend, although we've never met. Let's not forget the food. Never listen hungry. D. Sampson, great advice. Uh, M. Cabell761 says, it's the best Disney podcast ever. I only wish I knew about this podcast before we went to Walt Disney World. Now I'll be ready for our next trip. Thanks for all you do, Lou. Mad Melissa says, it's my favorite podcast, hands down. I love listening to Lou talk about Disney World. I love hearing the history of Walt Disney World and love little Lou's little boy enthusiasm whenever he talks about all things Disney. My favorites are the top tens with little Timmy Foster's and the restaurant reviews, although most restaurants are Disney Springs. Great show. And 
My hand with two D's says, love it. I listen to the show on my daily hour long walks. I've listened to every single one and I never tire of getting my Disney fix from Lou. The podcast has been a constant in my life for the past five years. Thanks to you. Thanks to all of you who listen. Again, just search for WW Radio and iTunes. Leave the review there. And finally, most importantly, I want to say thank you again to you from the bottom of my heart. I cannot express just how grateful I am for the blessing and the ability and the gift to be able to share my love of Disney and sort of all things in the Disney world with you. If there's ever some way that I can help you, please let me know. And whether it's on the Disney side or in business and life or your passion, whatever it is, because you should be focusing on the things that you love and the things that you are good at. And you just go be you, be who you are and do what you love. And if there's some way that I can help you turn that thing that you love into the thing that you do, I promise you it is. Uh, it makes for a much, much happier life. So I hope that this is your best week ever. I hope that you'll join me virtually in or really at Pixar Pier. So until next time, thanks again. See ya. Hi, Lou. This is Lori from Coriopolis slash Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Um, we love your show in the Tucker family. And we discovered this probably about two years ago, and it has made our Disney experience much more enjoyable. I've recommended it to all my friends and anyone that I know that's going to Disney World or even if they're just craving a little bit of Disney magic in their life. We all need to put on our mouth ears from time to time and just walk around the house in our bathroom and ears. So, having said that, we are excited to see you at La Trobe, PA. I'm particularly excited for you to meet my twin boys, Alex and Riley. Um, they are a treasure trove of youthly, useless non uh, nonsensical 17-year-old Disney trivia. I especially think that you're going to be interested in hearing my marvelous Marvel uh, enthusiast, Alex Tucker. And having said that, he will challenge you to a little bit of Marvel trivia and then drop the mic in your face. Uh, good luck with that. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Hey, Lou. It's Christine Morrison from Flyer Town, PA. Haven't called in in a while. But it's 4th of July. I'm on vacation in Ocean City, New Jersey. And I just ran the 9th Street Bridge, which is a total of six miles back and forth from my hotel to there and back. And I just listened to the latest podcast, so you guys helped me over that bridge. It's no easy task in this humid, hot weather. So I loved it. I can't wait to go to Toy Story Land. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be a few years before I go, but I just wanted to let you know you guys ran with me over that bridge today, so I hope you're feeling good, and uh, keep doing what you're doing. I'm going to go lay on the beach, and happy 4th of July, box people. Take care. Bye-bye. Hey, Lou. It's Christine Morrison from Flower Town, PA. Hope everybody's having a wonderful day. It's a beautiful, sunny Wednesday. My day off. Woohoo! Um, I listened to the Dan Corkrell interview this morning and I just had to share something that, um, you may not realize was your intention, but, um, when you do this, these podcasts and these interviews, um, it's quite inspiring. Um, since I started listening to you, um, I've really sort of changed the way I do my customer service, um, or maybe I've just been reminded um, about how to do great customer service. Um, my job can be very uh, difficult and taxing, and I do deal with a lot of um, upset people and trying to uh, communicate with them and, and solve their problems. Um, things that Dan Corkrell said um, were really inspiring to me, really hit home, um, and I just wanted to let you know that I loved the interview, and um, doing a podcast about Disney has inadvertently um, helped you uh, help others to have a more positive outlook on their day-to-day -day life through Disney. Um, and also, I want to thank you because I finally found a group that loves Disney as much as I do, doesn't think I'm crazy, um, that I can really vent all of my passion to, and they understand, and they get it, and they don't think I'm nuts. Um, and I, I just want to thank you for that. Um, 
I just enjoy it so much. It's such a great part of my week. So uh, I'll see you guys in the box tonight and have a wonderful, wonderful week. I wish I could join everybody in Japan. Maybe someday, someday I'll be able to do it um, when the kids are grown. So have a wonderful week. Keep moving forward. Everybody have a Disney day. And I challenge everybody to do something nice for somebody every day out of the goodness of your heart, whether it be anonymous or intentional. Um, make somebody smile every day. And have a great one, everybody. Bye-bye. Hey, Lou. This is Rip Pierce calling from Dallas, Texas. And I'm also calling from the future. Well, not really, but it sort of feels that way. I've been going back and listening to your original shows, and it's a lot of fun hearing all of the stories and, and rumors of things that that I already know either did happen or not going to happen. I've also enjoyed really listening to the way that you've changed your style and, and layout and design of the program over the years. But, it, you know, it just it feels like I'm a time traveler who's listening to an old TV or radio station, you know, because I know everything that's going to happen. So... In that vein, I've got a few messages from the future. The two new ships will be called the Dream and the Fantasy. Yes, that building next to the Contemporary will be a DVC resort. No, they never did build a park in Branson, Missouri, and the hat is gone. Oh, but Lou, the best is yet to come. The best thing is the food. The style, the quantity, the quality of food will amaze you. So sit back, relax, put on your stretchy pants, and enjoy the Disney World that is to come. See ya! Hello, Blue Mangello. It's Darlene Nagy from West Seneca, New York, calling in to say there are only 77 more days until my trip with the Sternbergs and Keith to Florida and Disney World to see Toy Story Land. Pandora, and Fantasyland for the Sternbergs. We are so excited to get down there to see all these new things and to try the new Dole Whip in Fantasyland by Pinocchio's Village House. We are so thrilled. Love, 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 love Key Lime. And you guys have only 84 days until that momentum adventure that everybody's going down for that was lucky to get a spot. Of course, the Japan trip that's coming up next year that I wish I could go on with Lou and Becky is 456 days away. So I'm sure that they are feverishly planning another event in September about a week before I get down there. So that's at about like 70 days probably, and I know they're waiting on finalizing that. So you guys have a wonderful weekend, and stay positive like Lou always says, love and hugs.